Thank you for watching the Table Community Church video podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. Good morning, church. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you that you are great. And God, I thank you for exactly what that song said. God, that we, man, we get to praise your name. Father, and we know that in eternity, we'll all get to praise your name. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do just that right here, right now. Father, I praise you for what you've done and what you will do in this place and through these people. Father, I thank you for what we get to be a part of in this community, in this city right here around this church to help teenagers and kids and young people and women and men who desperately, desperately need to hear that you are good. And Father, that you have a plan for us. Father, I thank you for what you do throughout this country, through the table, through the people that give here and serve here and love people here. Father, for what you do around the world. God, let us not miss out on our opportunity to be a greater part of your work. Father, may you bless this place. God, may you bless us individually, but also may you move us to action. May you move us to take steps of faith to do your will in this place and around the world. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church. I am Craig Alsop, and uh, just excited to get to speak here for the first time in the new sanctuary. Come on, this is this is cool. This is nice. Pastor Bill told me that I'd have to make sure that I like turned both directions. You guys stacked a little heavy on this side, so that helps me out a little. Um, but uh, man, excited to be here. Uh, as was mentioned a moment ago, I am Craig Alsop with Mana Worldwide. I'm an assistant director for Asia and also a partner here at the church at the table. And so I get to see both sides of this thing. Like I get to be here and see all that God's doing here in this place and in this community and around the world because I get to lead mission teams out of this place to go see what God's doing and to go participate in the work of God. As was mentioned a moment ago by Wayne, I get to share this good news of the kingdom to people in Panama and Nepal and kind of everywhere in between. Let us not forget the blessing that we have to get to praise him, to get to worship him, to get to be a part of what he's doing. This morning, I want to talk a little bit about sort of a prayer for the church and really a prayer for us as a church going forward and us collectively as a church called The Table, but also us individually as individual members of the body of that church. You see, with Mana Worldwide, we truly believe in getting individual people within a church connected with that church's mission to go out and reach the world, to make disciples, as Jesus said our mission is. I truly believe that when we can get the church to take steps forward in action, that God can do incredible things through us and also in our lives, in the church here called The Table, and throughout the world in the body of believers. With Mana Worldwide, we work in 50 countries now. It's grown a lot since I came on board just over four years ago with Mana. 50 countries, about 225 different ongoing projects. That's everything from helping to plant churches to orphanages, nutrition centers, schools, medical clinics, digging water wells. As Wayne mentioned a moment ago, that we get to be the hands and feet of Christ We get to lift people out of their physical poverty, but also to help them realize their spiritual poverty. We get to lift people out of both physical and spiritual poverty throughout this world because that's what Jesus told us to do. Man, let's not miss the opportunity to get to be a part of all that. My 
hope for us this morning is that we'll be uplifted by all that God is doing here in this community and around the world through the table. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a moment. But also that we will be awestruck by the fact that we get to be a part of it. See, when I stand up here, I'm not advocating for me. I'm not even really advocating for man of worldwide. What I'm advocating for is for people to take a step of faith towards a good God who promises to do great things through us and in us if we will. I'm advocating for kids and families on the other side of the planet sometimes who haven't even heard about Jesus not one time who you can go to. Isn't it cool how we can fly everywhere and be anywhere in less than 24 hours these days? Who we can go to and share the gospel with. They can accept Christ and they can live all eternity worshiping him. My hope is that we'll grab onto that this morning. My hope is that we'll do something with that this morning. I want to tell you about a couple projects and uh, some things that MANA uh, does that the table is involved in. And we take teams about once a year we go to Panama. And uh, about two or three times a year I go to Nepal. And so I've taken some people from the table to both of those places multiple times now. And it's always incredible. It's always a blessing. If you, if you want to know more about that, you can look around and all the people shaking their heads, those are the people you can ask. But I want to talk about Nepal and, and tell a couple little stories and a little bit about what's going on there. I spoke with our director in Nepal just last week. And he said that just this past week, that coming out of the nutrition center, I mean, we think about a nutrition center as meeting people's physical needs, right? But they're also sharing the gospel with these kids. And so out of Baisapati Nutrition Center, our staff there have been able to connect with these kids and by extension, their families. And just this past week, they got to go into the home of one of the families of our kids from our nutrition center that you guys support fully. They got to go into this home and this family heard about Jesus really for the first time. And this family accepted Christ as their Savior. Man, isn't that good? Isn't God good to let us be a part of that? Listen, there are right now, uh, it's kind of the title of this message is a prayer for the church. And, and I want to go ahead and call out one prayer that I, I'd have us pray and that I'd hope we'd pray today. There are multiple kids and families that are connected with Bicepati Nutrition Center who right now have shared that they want to believe, that they want to step out in faith and say, God is good and I believe in Jesus. But they're scared of the persecution that definitely will come if they do. They're scared to be ostracized from their community, to be kicked out of their jobs, to lose their businesses, to maybe lose their homes. A friend of mine in Nepal just lost his home a couple months ago because he was having church in his house. Listen, church, may we be prayerful for these people, that they may come to a faith in Christ that's hard, that's a tough faith that they have to fight for. Man, may we not forget how easy it is for us sometimes, but how difficult it is for so many people. And then in Panama, you guys, we support a girl's home. Basically, Pastor Rafael Rodriguez, who's there, full-time, he and his wife Tracy, they have four kids of their own now, all like first, second, third. I mean, they just back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, all young kids. And they've taken in six girls who needed a home. And all of these girls are in 8th grade, 12th grade, a couple of them are in college. And these girls are killing it in school. They're serving in the church. Several of them are playing guitar in the band at church. Several of them are serving in the nursery. I mean, bless their hearts for that. I, I, I don't know how they do it, but okay. Um, they're serving in the nursery. They're serving in the kids' programs. They're playing guitar. They're sharing the gospel in their community. And listen... The table is a part of that. We're a partner in that ministry. So I'm here to advocate for them, but I'm also here to remind us, man, that we get to, we get to be a part of all that. Pray for 
Pastor Rafi, as he has, I think, seven, eight girls in his home now. And it's he and little Rafi are the only guys. I mean, come on. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. He's always going to be <laughs> overruled, right? But God's doing an incredible work there. I just want to, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for those who have been here before when we've done Manna Sunday. You guys probably saw these cards kind of sitting around as you came in. You thought, oh, that's somebody else's seat. I'll scoot down. Um, it wasn't true. These are just there for you to take a glance at. We're going to challenge you here in a moment to give and to be a part of these kids' lives, to be a part of these families getting saved, to be a part of what God's doing. And so we're going we're gonna to go to that in a moment, but I want to talk about sort of my prayer for the church. Back in September, I was kind of praying over what to speak about at a couple different churches that I was speaking at in September and October. And, you know, I thought, I stand up and I tell people, okay, this is what the Bible says we're meant to do as Christians. This is how the Bible says we're meant to step forward and take steps of faith and do what God commands us to do. And sometimes, if I'm truthful, I can stand up and I can advocate for these kids, but I can forget to pray for them. I can forget to love them enough to pray for them. And so I want to challenge us this morning. That may it not just be that I stand here and I advocate for kids and I say give and go and serve and all that, but may it be that we love these kids. May it be that we see them just a little as God sees them, as in desperate need, but as people that we can help to reach. And so I want to speak this morning and uh, from John 11.35. Some of us who are trying to memorize the Bible will absolutely love this verse because uh, it's like the shortest verse, right? Jesus wept. I didn't even have to look at my screen here. That was good, right? Jesus wept wept. And I kind of added up on the screen there, I kind of added over those in need. Because Jesus wept over those in need. In this moment in John 11, it was a chapter dedicated to what's going on in the life and death of a person named Lazarus and what Jesus is doing about that. And in this story, you remember that Jesus and Lazarus were close friends. But you remember Lazarus got sick, and then Jesus was told that Lazarus is sick and asked to come and visit and said, you know, you need, you need to come see your friend who's dying. But Jesus waited to go see him, and, and you know, we worry about that sometimes. We're like, why did he wait? But Jesus eventually goes, Right? Jesus eventually goes, just not in our timing, but in his perfect timing. Jesus goes to Lazarus' his friend. And in this verse, in 1135, we see Jesus weeping. And I think it's meant to point us to the fact that Jesus felt and feels what we feel. His human side was displaying his sadness over his friend being sick and passing away. While at the same time, the divinity in him, the God in him, had to be rejoicing because he knew his friend would be forever healed, right? But then Jesus goes to visit Mary and Martha. They're really upset, and there's all these people weeping and wailing, and everybody's upset, and Lazarus is in the tomb, and Jesus shows up on the scene. They begin to wonder kind of what, what's Jesus going to do here? And Jesus displays his power as God by raising him from the dead. Jesus does a miraculous work in the life and in the death of Lazarus and raises him from the dead. And people are amazed. <laughs> They're shocked. Like, who is this man? May we point people to Jesus so much that people are shocked. Like, who is this man? May we be a part of what Jesus is doing so much that 
people look at us and say, well, that's not them. It must be God. And then in Romans 12, 15, the Bible reminds us that we are to be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. We're supposed to weep with the effects of sin. And I believe that Jesus in that uh, John verse wept with the effects of sin and death and evil. It's not supposed to be that way. But we're also supposed to rejoice in his power. We're supposed to rejoice in his power to overcome sin and death. We're meant to be joyful and glad. So kind of my first may we, my first prayer for the church is that may we follow Jesus in our sympathy, in the way we empathize with others, And in our action towards those in need who desperately need Jesus. And they need food, and they need water, and they need shelter, and they need clothing. People need hope. You believe that? People in this world need hope like they've maybe never needed it before. Sometimes you listen to the news and it can be a real hopeless scenario, right? People need hope. My prayer is that we will help to give them hope. And then in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, there's a verse that's been taken all kinds of different directions, but we're going to stay middle of the road on it. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1, the Bible says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but I didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Church, may we not be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. May we not just speak the tongues of men. May we love people. May we not become so concerned with helping those in need that we forget to love them first. So I spoke about a moment ago when sometimes I can stand here and advocate and I can say, man, they... We we desperately need this. God is doing a work. These people are hurting. Be a part of it. Be a partner in the work. But if I stand up here and do that and I forget to love them first, I'm not. I'm not being respectful of who Jesus is. I'm not displaying who Jesus is. And so may we take the time to love people. Not just to serve people. Not just to give to people. Those are all great things. But I think what turns it up a notch, what changes the way we respond to people is our love for them. I heard a pastor one time say that whatever the heart of Jesus felt, his hand touched. Man, I love that. Whatever the heart of Jesus felt, his hand touched. Church, may may that be our story. May our hearts be touched. May we love people and then reach out to show it. On earth today, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet. If you've been here before when I've spoken, I think I've shared this before, but there's almost 8 billion people. I think 7.67 billion. I don't know how they count that high. And just over 3 billion of those people are considered completely unreached with this good news. Just over 3 billion people have zero access to the gospel currently. That's people that don't have a church called the table down the street that they could come to if they wanted to. They don't have a pastor living close by that they could talk with. They don't have a Bible maybe in their language or on their phone or in their hands. They don't have a person working next door or living next door or working across the aisle from them that could go to them and share Jesus with them. Over 3 billion people, church. So we look at those numbers. I like to, sometimes I think I've done this before, but we like to take and split the church and say, congratulations, everybody from here over. You've heard about Jesus. You've had access to this good news. It doesn't necessarily mean you've accepted it, but if you've got a Bible, you've got a person that could tell you about Jesus, you've got a church down the street, Congratulations. And those of us on this side, I'm sorry you don't. 
And the truth of the matter is you probably never will unless the people on this side of the aisle get extremely passionate and dedicated to taking steps of faith, to giving, to going, to serving, to loving you so that you're reached. That's how real this is. So may we let down any guards on our heart. Because man, when I start mentioning those numbers, that shakes me. That scares me. I've dedicated my life to reaching people for Jesus around the world. And those numbers frighten me. Because it can't be about me. It's got to be about a God who does exceedingly abundantly beyond all I can ask or think. May we let down any guards on our hearts, church, that, that stop us. And as we let down those guards, may we allow God in and through us to make an infinitely greater impact on the world than we could ever imagine. Man, I love that. Ephesians 3.20, I kind of quoted part of it a moment ago, but it says that God has plans to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ask or think. (laughs) Man, isn't that good? He has plans to do it. The question is, will we step forward to be a part of his plans to do it? I believe that's, that's the choice we all face as Christians. We all know specific needs of people around us, right? I mean, you look around our community and you see specific and desperate needs of people. I mean, you see people right, right within a mile or two of here that have desperate needs. Wayne sees those all the time with kids and the kids that come to the Effie Center. Right? We see those needs, right? Desperate needs, urgent, ongoing needs. If you ever, if you ever get on one of our mission trips from the table, um, I can promise you something. I can promise you that you'll come home with the faces, and the names, and the needs of people engraved on your heart. I can promise you that you'll see some of the most desperately needy people, but also some of the most loving, caring, giving people that you'll ever meet. I can promise you that you'll see God do a work. I never go on a mission trip where I don't see God do something absolutely, insanely incredible. (laughs) See, God tends to take a step when we take a step. And so when we step forward in faith, we see God do incredible things. May we be at God's disposal to be the means by which desperate prayers are answered, church. May we be at God's disposal to be the means by which desperate prayers are answered because we, maybe like no other people on the planet ever in the history of the planet, have an opportunity to make an impact. And if you feel like you don't, man, I challenge you to come talk to me. I want to share like a hundred stories with you that I don't have time to share up here of how just regular people, just normal people, just people that were sitting in that chair looking up here going, oh, that's, man, that's good that he gets to do that. Because that's where I was not too long ago, by the way. I want to share some stories of how God has done incredible things because people made themselves available. And then in Luke 5, verses 12 through 13, it says, In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. Now, this is a big deal because in that day and age, meeting a man with an advanced case of leprosy meant that you were probably going to a place that most clean Jews would not go to. I mean, people with leprosy were pushed outside the camp. They were pushed outside the city to live on the fringes, to live on the outskirts, to live where nobody really had to deal with them while they were unclean, while they were suffering from this illness. And so it says, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. And when the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. 
Lord, he said, if you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean. It says that Jesus reached out and touched him. In a time and a place where people didn't even want to look at the person with leprosy. They wanted them outside the camp, away from people, away from us. Stay away from us. We don't want to deal with you. In case we might become unclean. Not only did Jesus go to the place where that man was. Not only did he speak to the man. He paid him some attention, but it says he reached out and he touched him. It was considered unclean, and so the leaders that were kind of following Jesus around probably would have had some concerns about Jesus reaching out and touching this man. And Jesus says, I am willing, be healed, and instantly the leprosy disappears. That's part of that when Jesus, when the heart of Jesus felt something, his hand tended to touch it. When Jesus felt love for a person, he would step forward in that love to help that person. And so Jesus touches him and says, be healed, and he's healed immediately. Church, another prayer that I have for the church body as a whole for us at the table, but all of us around the world. May we move towards those in need. Sometimes it's far too easy to shelter ourselves into comfortable Christianity and a life here in the States where we can truly dodge most of what hurts. I mean, we can truly dodge most of the, the, the pains and the struggles and the difficulties that many people around the world face all day, every day. We can really shield ourselves if we're not careful. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't struggle. That doesn't mean that we don't have valid concerns and difficulties and, and, and life struggles. But we can really shield ourselves from a lot of things. I don't believe that's what Jesus did. I believe we're meant to step forward, step out in faith, that we're meant to love people, that we're meant to share hope with people. We're meant to move towards people in need. So church, I want to give you the opportunity this morning to move towards those in need in a real tangible way. I want to give you the opportunity to fill out one of those cards around you. And to just say, I want to be a part of what God's doing through Mana Worldwide and in Panama and in Nepal and through our partners on the ground there and through these kids that are sharing the gospel and through these families that are coming to faith in Christ and needing somebody to step out, to touch them, to love them, to care about them. I want to challenge you this morning to consider if you've ever considered going on a mission trip before, or maybe if you haven't considered going on a mission trip before, I want to just put out there that we still need one or two people to go on the Panama trip that happens in May. Melissa uh, Forge and her family are going, and then several other people from this church and other churches are going. And so I want to challenge you. We've got a, we've got a table set up out there uh, against the wall in the foyer. And if you are interested at all in going on that trip, just step out there and talk with me. May 23rd through the 29th, you don't have to get a massive amount of shots. You do have to have a passport. You do have to pay some money in. But listen, I promise it'll be worth it. In Nepal, we, uh, we support a center called Bai Sapati Nutrition Center. And it sits on the outskirts of Kathmandu the capital city. It's a city of like three million people, but we're kind of in a villagey area on the outskirts. And we've got a nutrition center there that's feeding kids uh, six days a week. And these kids are primarily from Hindu backgrounds, Hindu families. That means they have multiple, multiple gods that they worship. And they come to us from these Hindu backgrounds and they get food for their bellies, yes, We also have teachers come in and help and tutor and teach them to help them in school. 
We have people that go out into the community. Like I said a moment ago, this family came to faith because our people went out and served and loved and told these people about Jesus. We have about 80 kids that are served there throughout the week every week. It costs about $900 a month total, and the table supports the vast majority of that. $900 a month means over 80 kids get the food that they need. They get educational help that they need to step forward in life. They get to hear about Jesus. And then in Panama, you guys support the Rodriguez girls' home, and there's six girls uh, being uh, in, in that home now with Pastor Raphael and Tracy. And these kiddos have grown up now for the last few years hearing about Jesus And hearing about the hope of Christ and they've come to salvation in Christ and they've gotten baptized and now they're sharing the gospel in their community and they're going to school and sharing the gospel. And they're praising him. You guys are a part of that. And this home needs about $400 a month and we, again, support the majority of that. And so I want to challenge you right now to just, um, if you'll look around you and kind of grab one of these cards, one per family, If you've filled out one of these cards already in service, you know, last year, the year before when we did Manna Sundays, um, I just want to challenge you, go ahead and pick up a card again, um, just so that we kind of get a refresher on who's giving, um, how much total uh, that we can expect to come in so that we can kind of know where to go with these projects. Um, And so if you've already sponsored kids, uh, there's a place on there that says, I'm already a sponsor. Go ahead and mark that. Say, this is how much I give. I'm going to continue doing that or whatever. Um, If you're going to increase it, just write that on there. I'm going to increase it. Put your name and an email address on there. Um, and then if, if maybe you haven't gotten involved before, maybe you weren't here last time, maybe you're new to the table, I want to challenge you to be a part, to be a partner in this work. If you would consider this your church family, I want to consider you to pick up one of these cards and mark, say, hey, I'll give $28 a month, or I'll give 50 or I'll give 100 or I'll give whatever I can, $10 a month, to support these kids and to make sure that they hear about Jesus. You can go ahead and be filling those out. And then if you just give those to anybody with a lanyard um, on your way out, or if you'll bring them to the table, which is right outside this exit door here, um, you can give those to my wife and I. Uh, You can also bring them out there and ask us any questions that you want. Um, Just come out and talk with us about the Panama trip, about getting involved with uh, filling out a card and supporting kiddos. You'll give that money through the table. So if you write a check or you put money in the offering uh, baskets, you can just mark on the check, hey, this much is for manna, this much is for whatever, uh, for the you know, for church or for missions or for whatever, the building fund. If you give online, there's actually a place there where you can delineate for manna. And so just want to challenge you to go ahead and do that um, this morning. And then to pray for the kids, to pray for the communities that we serve in Panama and Nepal to let our hearts be touched by their need. And then to, again, I'll mention, to get on a a life-changing mission trip with us. Um, That trip to Panama, uh, it's about $1,500, $1,550 per adult. If it's an adult uh, family, there's more than two people in a room. Uh, The kiddos will be discounted because their flights are a little cheaper and the hotel costs will be uh, split up a little differently. And so come out there and talk with us about that and we can get you signed up for that. Actually, after the second service, I think we're going to have a meeting today uh, just out in the foyer about the Panama trip. So if you want to... Stick around or swing back around and talk with us about that. We'd love to, love to do that with you as well. And so I want to go ahead and pray as, uh, as you guys uh, fill out those cards, give them to us at the door, give them to us in the lobby. Um, I want to go ahead and pray, and um, then I think Pastor Bill is going to come up. Father, thank you for this good news. God, thank you that we get to be a part of the work that you're doing around the world and in this community. Father, your will be done in us and through us. Father, thank you for all that you do through manna. Thank you for all that you do through the table. How you allow us to be a part and a partner in your work around the world. God, I ask for 
ask for you to do a mighty work. And I know that you will. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. For more information on The Table Community Church, visit us at our website at www.thetablecc.com.